Hello everyone and welcome back to the Morphe Saga. We are continuing the 1858 match between Paul Morphy and Paul Journaux uh, in Paris. We have left it off uh, uh, after the, the, the previous two games that Morphy won. Uh, first game was uh, rather clean, second not so much, but this game, uh, as the title suggests, uh, could be very well uh, Morphy's worst game ever. Now, uh, that could mean a lot, so let's first check out the game. Uh, and see why this is so. So Morphe again with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by Journaux, knight to f3, knight to c6, uh, sorry, uh, knight to c6, knight to c6, and bishop to c4 now. Uh, we have bishop to c5, and now Morphe of course goes for the Evans gambit. We have b4, uh, you don't have to think twice if the situation arises on the board where the Evans Gambit can be played, Morphe will play it. But here, uh, we don't have the usual bishop captures on b4, we don't have the retreat to b6 or the retreat to e7, but rather we have d5. And this is the hind counter gambit to the Evans Gambit. Uh, we've seen it already on this channel. And it is, uh, well, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, it can be uh, a, a very tricky idea. So here, uh, E captures on D5. Morphe grabs the pawn and now attacks the knight here. Knight captures on B4. Uh, and now, basically, you're inviting white to capture on E5, but that's not all that great. If knight captures, bishop D4 will put pressure on the knight and the rook. And okay, uh, it's not that you actually lose a piece because after, for example, C3, you will capture the knight. And now you still can't capture because the rook would hang but you will play d4 and only now after the bishop moves will you grab the knight but still you have uh, double the d pawns it's not uh, not something you want to look forward to with white so instead after this knight captures on b4 we have c3 pushing back the knight much like you would uh, in the normal evans gambit and now knight captures on d5 and here we have queen to b3 by morphe and it is as of move seven that this position has never been reached again and for good reasons, it doesn't uh, yield all that much for white if black plays properly and black does play properly. Here we have c6, cementing that knight on d5. Uh, we have castles by Morphe, now with ideas of knight captures on e5, which is kind of... Uh, dangerous uh, uh, w while the king is still here on e1, but now it's definitely a threat. So here e4 by Journaux uh, and rook to e1, pinning that pawn so the, the knight cannot be captured. We have f5 defending the pawn, and now uh, Journaux spent a lot of moves um, uh, to, to you know advance those pawns to defend the e4 pawn, but his king is still in the center and he will need at least two moves to get it back to safety. So Morphe, of course, attacks the center. We have d3. Attacking e4 and preparing to uh, win material and open up the e file. So here we have knight g to, uh, to f6 now offering this pawn, uh, but it's um, uh, not offering, defending the pawn, but now bishop to g5. Morphe uh, pins one of the defenders and now is threatening pawn captures here. And here Journaud uh, couldn't... Um, uh, find the, the the correct continuation. He played queen to d6. He decided to unpin, uh, so the knight would once again be defending e4. But I will show uh, what uh, fun lines happen after black just castles. Now you offer the e4 pawn, and after the pawn is captured, for example, captures, captures, and captures, uh, now black has this bishop captures and f2 move. So uh, you will not be able to capture the e4 pawn because of this idea. And now, of course, you cannot capture. If you capture, then you uh, eliminate the, the rook with check, just knight captures on e4 with check. You also pick up the bishop later on, and the black is just completely winning. So here you would have to go to h1, and then after king to h1, uh, we would have uh, this position where black is uh, perfectly fine. He has more than enough compensation b5 can either uh, even force uh, some further trades for example captures captures and now uh, black is just uh, completely dominant so instead after bishop to g5 we have queen to d6 uh, Ajorno doesn't spot this uh, very nice uh, trick with castles and now he's once again defending this pawn but now morphe eliminates uh Oh, well, he could go knight b to d2 once uh, uh, before capturing an f6 as it adds another attacker to d4 pawn. Uh, but he decides to capture an f6 first. We have knight captures an f6 and now knight b to d2. Again, adding a third attacker here. And uh, again, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a very interesting position. Um, uh, you could go knight g4, like go after the f2 pawn. Then white will play something like d4, maybe bishop back to b6. And it's not great, but at least you prevented white from opening up the e-file. And you will now be able to 
not castle, but you will be able to maybe bring uh, pieces into the game. Maybe you can castle queenside, who knows. But instead, after this knight b to d2, we have b5 by Journaux, now attacking Morphy's bishop, and now Morphy goes for bishop to f7 check. Again, uh, Morphy misses the... Uh, the very nice continuation of d captures on e4 now threatening just uh, opening up the the e file with captures on f5 and with the bishop controlling this diagonal it's going to be very deadly the rook can come to d1 not a lot you can do here you could grab the bishop but then again uh, you could just play queen captures on c4 and again not much uh, can be done here for black if you place if, if you try and keep on to the material uh, you have to keep defending this bishop also e5 is coming so that's going to be dangerous you could play something like this uh, but the just e captures an f5 with check and now you cannot go here you have to go to the d file and after king d8 you're going to go knight b3 with a double attack on the bishop rook a to d1 check is coming the rooks are completely dominant here uh, it's uh, game over for black so instead uh, instead of going for this after b5 morphy goes for bishop to f7 check uh, but this gives black counterplay black uh, plays king to f8 and now we have d captures on e4 again d4 might be a bit, bit of a safer option here but morphy goes for d captures on e4 and here was uh, black's last uh, moment where he could have gone for a better move uh, queen to e7 for black uh, just makes sense uh, as uh, you, you go after the bishop on f7 and also you add another defender to the e4 pawn and you prepare f captures on e4 so queen to e7 uh, is everything uh, black needs here however uh, black accepted on e4 he played f captures on e4 and now the game is once again winning for morphy so morphy goes for it knight captures on e4 we have knight captures and rook captures on e4 now preparing to bring the other rook over to d1 bishop to f5 attacking morphy's rook on e4 and now rook to d1 again going after the black queen we have queen to f6 and now morphy goes for knight to e5 and this is all again uh from a completely winning position morphy again plays for tricks and again uh, finds himself in not the the, the greatest uh, of positions because here okay if black is uh greedy goes for material plays something like bishop captures on e4 then yes knight d7 check wins the game on the spot uh, but if he doesn't, uh, let's say he plays something like g6, then white doesn't really have a good way to continue the attack. Uh, you have to m move the rook, and after that, uh, the black king will go to g7. The rook will come into the game, obviously not there, <laughs> for example, to d8, and everything will be fine. Black has a very nice control of the dark squares, and you will be able to w wiggle around the light squares. But instead, again, after this knight to e5, Morphy's opponent played bishop captures on f2 with check. And now, again, what do you play here? Uh, obviously, you could capture the bishop. But if you capture the bishop, then uh, you get this discovery. You just move the bishop, uh, hopefully by, by grabbing the rook. And after the king moves, you, you're also going to capture the knight. And now black is just up too much material and winning. Morphy, not one to be tricked so easily, goes king to h1 first. And now, uh, again, it's black to move. What do you play here? Uh, here we have rook to d8. Bringing that rook into the game and trying to trade off... Uh, uh, Morphy sparrow rooks uh, and Morphy again uh, misses the the uh, pretty much instant win here Morphy plays a knight to d7 check which is kind of also playing for tricks the the brute uh, forcing rook captures on d8 uh, is is winning on the spot for example captures captures and now knight captures on c6 is enough uh, the queen is under attack uh, you also might have some ideas of maybe rook to, rook to e8 in some lines. You don't have to worry about checkmate. The queen is guarding d1. So here we would probably see something like queen to c8 and then bishop to h5. We threaten checkmate here. And there's uh, not a lot you can do here to defend. You can play g6 to block checkmate, but then rook to e7. Again, we're threatening checkmate here. And now there's pretty much only, only one thing. You can play bishop to e6 to kind of prolong the game. But still, after rook captures, you defend the, the knight here and you are just winning. Uh, the uh, Well, of course, the bishop cannot be captured as then it's just made into king g7 or, you know, uh, just queen to f7 checkmate so this is not possible so rook captures uh the uh the obvious moves move wins but morphy still goes for knight to d7 check again he decides to complicate things and what do you play here of course now the rook cannot move from the back rank otherwise you get rook to e8 checkmate so you have to play something else uh sorry about that uh, so after this check, uh, Morphy's opponent played rook captures on d7. Sorry, he played bishop captures on d7. And now Morphy goes for rook captures on d7. 
Uh, luckily, there is no queen to h1, otherwise you'd have to worry about that as well. The c3 pawn guards against that uh, very nicely. So here, of course, again, you cannot capture. Rook to e8 will be checkmate. So here, rook to c8 by Journaux. And now Morphe plays bishop to h5. Again, queen to b4 check is just deadly here. But okay, uh, bishop to h5, threatening rook to f7, uh, which would come with check. Then you just win the queen and the game. So g6, and now comes rook e to e7. This is what Morphe goes for instead. And by doing this, he allows black to give up uh, the, the queen for two rooks, which of course black does. We have queen captures on e7. Rook captures and king captures on e7. And now there is only one winning move for Morphe. So feel free to pause the video and try to find this uh, move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, going uh, for, for the tempo move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to g4. Bishop to g4 attacking that rook on c8 uh, because you cannot allow black to make a consolidating move. If you play something like bishop to f3, uh, it, it, uh, you allow, for example, rook h to e8. And now with both rooks into the game, it's not going to be easy. For example, queen uh, goes here with check, king to f7, and now... Uh, already you have problems. There's the threat of rook t1, which would end in checkmate, and um, uh, even though you have a queen, uh, two rooks are extremely powerful. So here, congratulations to everyone who found bishop to g4, because now black needs to react to this. You have to move the rook. Uh, we have rook c to d8, and now comes queen to b4. Again, a mistake by Morphe here. Uh, it's uh, I, I have no idea how do you miss something. How do you not play queen to e6 here? You, this is... Uh, uh, I, I think Morphe maybe was just looking at other games or something, or maybe he already uh, defeated him 2-0 to zero and then he just, uh, you know, played silly moves. But uh, there's really not a lot to consider here. Queen e6 check. Uh, there's only one move for the black king, king to f8, and then queen f6. We reach the position from the thumbnail. Wherever the king moves, uh, you're either gonna grab one of the rooks, or even if uh, a king goes here, then you can even play bishop to e6 checkmate. So this is... Um, uh, th this is pretty crazy. So Morphe did not go for this. Morphe instead went for queen to b4 with check. And now we have c5. And c5 is again a mistake by Journaux. Uh, uh, if he had played rook to d6 with the, with the idea of bringing the other rook here, then you've activated all of your pieces and there are no tricks. There is no... Uh, no uh, the trickery white can use to, to 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 even think about winning some material but instead of this uh Genot played c5 and now yes uh, morphe can do a lot morphe played queen to e4 with check and now you have to be very careful the bishop on f2 is very exposed and uh, you don't really have a good square for the king king to d6 was played but now just queen to f4 with check connecting with the bishop we have king to c6 and now queen captures on f2 so grabbing that bishop, uh, the light square bishop guards the d1 square, so you don't have to worry about rook to d1. Uh, we have rook h to f8 trying to get the queen away from this square, but now bishop to f3 check. This is super important uh, because uh, uh, e even if uh, something... Uh, well, you can't even sacrifice here because then just the queen captures and this square is again covered. So this is not possible. But white could also just capture with the g-pawn. Doesn't really matter. Uh, point is, there's not much for black to do here. King to b6 was played, but here uh, Morphe just played h3. He made some breeding room for the king. And after rook to d1 check and king h2, it was in this position that Paul Journaux resigned the game. Uh, on move 33 as there is nothing more to be done here. So really, really crazy stuff. I don't think we've seen, uh, w when I say Morphe's worst game, and it's funny because, of course, he still won the game, uh, but uh, the, 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 there have been other games that Morphe lost, but they've just, they, they just weren't this bad. Uh, he, his opponent played uh, some sort of a brilliancy, or you know, they, they played at least uh, like five moves uh, that were the top moves recommended by the engine. But here, Morphe, it's like he was trying to, to e either lose or uh, at least uh, give Journaux one draw, uh, but in the end, e even that was not enough. Uh, but yeah, pretty crazy game. Maybe they were drunk. Maybe they had like uh, you know uh, two bottles of wine each. I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, the, the <laughs> I think uh, uh, so far of all the games that we've shown, uh, the most uh, imprecise uh, Mor Morphe game uh, so far. 
Uh, so yeah, those are the three games uh, Morphe played against Paul Journo uh, in uh, Café de la uh, Regence. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Morphe is now waiting for uh, for uh, Harwitz and uh, Harwitz will be back on Saturday and then Morphe will challenge him. But uh, uh, we'll see if he will... Uh, if Harwich will accept the challenge or will he try to pull a Staunton, uh, but we still don't know what, what's going to happen with Staunton. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Harwitz is a, is a very strong opponent. He played against some very strong players, won some very nice matches. Uh, he stood his own against um, uh, against Adolf Anderson, so it's going to be a pretty, pretty awesome match. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is, uh, I, I believe, Morphe's worst game. So hope, hope you guys enjoyed that. But it, it still was a very, very interesting game to see. Uh, I would like to thank Luis Medrano, Frauke Steihart, um, uh, Hugo Tiziari, Derek Lee, and Tan Lui Ha for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.